Ah yes, the moment we've all been waiting for. Minecraft Live 2020 has finally aired, and there's a lot to unpack. 1.18 news, 1.19 news, dungeon stuff, a lot. So here's all the news and everything announced in Minecraft Live 2021. Surprisingly enough, the Warden and the Deep Dark will not be coming in 1.18, which at first sounds very disappointing, which fair enough, but as we will see later in this video, this is a positive thing. Now some really good information is that 1.18 has been confirmed to be coming sometime this year, which Lee's Winters has said one or two months from now. Actually almost done, so we're gonna release it in a month or two. So my original theory for when 1.18 will come out is still possible. Check that video up here in the top right corner of the screen. Something that I already thought was in the game, surprisingly enough, is seed parity. Meaning that if you're a Java player, you can share the same seed number with a Bedrock player so you guys can view the exact same world type. I mean, it'll look a little bit different, but still. Mojang has done two different things to help smooth out the world generation when you update from 1.17 to 1.18. One thing they've done is updated the bottom of their world. So where it was Bedrock there, there is now the updated world, as we can see in the Minecraft Live reveal. Henrik's world is around 10 years old, yet he gets new stuff if he digs all the way down. So, if you have an old world, you don't have to worry about going all the way out and simply strategically go all the way down and you'll be able to find the new generation. Unlike we saw what happened to me when I was doing the showcase in my last video. There's also a thing called world blending, which allows for smoother generation. Let's say you had a world since 1.9 and you just had updated into 1.18 and somehow managed to find the new mounts. And we would get all this kind of weird jagged look since you were in 1.17, but then we're not are now in 1.18, which all the mountains since they were raised look all jagged. But with world blending, this is a little bit smoother. An interesting one is Java is now on Game Pass, meaning that if you go into the Microsoft Store and use Game Pass, you can get Minecraft Java instead of just using the launcher on the Microsoft Store, making Jedrock or ba ba Bava Edition. Whatever. Something really, really interesting to me personally, one of my favorite things on this list is Blockbench, which allows you to create your custom mobs with ease. You can literally create whatever you'd like. Minecraft Dungeons is getting seasonal adventures, which allows players to get all different times of loot. Something that's been teased weeks ago is the new Towers update coming to Minecraft Dungeons as well, which allows players to start from scratch without losing all of their items in the main game to keep building up, which, which with each floor of the tower, as the levels progress, they get harder and harder. Also emotes, let's go. Now, breaking Minecraft's record for the lowest <laughs> percentage ever scored in the mob vote history is this year's mob vote with the glare, ally, and copper golem. The glare tells players where dark areas are with level one, where mobs can possibly spawn. The ally, if you give it an item, can give you a similar item back in return, and the copper golem can just mess with buttons and be like some sort of redstone assistant. And hey, surprisingly enough, Dream did not interfere this time. Wait, what? What is this tweet? Uh, the, the, the video next week. With the glare getting its butt whipped, with over 1.2 million people voting, only 11% voted for this glare. We were left with the ally and the copper golem, which the ally came on top both times. Jeez, is any bomb I'm ever going to vote for ever going to get in once in the game? It always seems to be the exact opposite. I would for Copper Golem if you're curious. Now, one of the most jaw dropping things announced in this showcase was the announcement of the wild update. Yes, the wild update. So, not the end in the sky that I thought was going to be at before. Of course, I put my money on the end, but whatever. Now, this wild update is huge. Not only is it a super interesting update, introducing, or excuse me, reintroducing the deep dark and giving us the swamp creatures and mobs from past votes, this also could mean that we could be seeing the Badlands, Savannah, deserts, and biomes like that in the near future sooner than we originally thought. Hopefully we see these biome losers soon, and maybe the mobs. In the wild update we're seeing abandoned cities in the deep dark where the warden can spawn with tons and tons of new blocks. And yes, 
Yes, the deep dark and the warden are being delayed, but this is definitely worth it, which gives them enough time to work harder with this. Personally, very, very hyped. Also, yeah, I just realized I voted for the swamp last year. Sweet. Well, not last year, 2019. The swamp will have the mangroves, the frogs, fireflies. Let's go. And book with the chest. Oh, and uh, by the way, guys, check out th this mob debate. I know it's a little bit outdated, probably, but check out this mob debate in the top right corner of the screen. I did collaboration with some other people, and we did some kind of skit for you all. So check it out. So there you have it. Minecraft Live 2021 has introduced so many things that I'm very excited for. The only thing I'm disappointed about is we're still not getting any Minecraft Story Mode Season 3 news, which, you know, is probably never happening. And no m news for the Minecraft movie, but, you know, whatever. It's not like this thing is still happening or anything. Probably should start, you know, giving us some news or I'll be forced to write. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I should have videos around every week talking about my thoughts about 1.18 and 1.19. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Farewell.